Having one or more of your accounts hacked unfortunately happens all too often, which is crazy because there is a very simple solution. Two-factor authentication or 2FA to use the abbreviation is your best protection against your accounts being hacked. Even if you were to use password123 as the password for most of your accounts, which you really shouldn't do, with 2FA enabled, it's still highly unlikely your accounts will ever be hacked. And here's why. 2FA adds a second level of authentication when logging into your accounts. Compare it to opening a bank account. When you open a bank account, you usually have to provide two forms of identification, say your driver's license and a utility bill. The same is true of 2FA. With 2FA enabled, when you log into one of your accounts, you have to provide your credentials plus the 2FA code. The code is commonly six digits and can be provided in several ways. You can use a 2FA app, or it can be sent via SMS, or in the case of Apple, for example, it will appear on screen on one of your devices. What makes 2FA so secure is that the code is completely random and held by you, not by the company you have your account with. So whilst data breaches do frequently occur, often exposing millions of customer account details, even if a hacker were to get hold of your username and password, they would still need your 2FA code to access your account. And believe me, once they see you're using 2FA, chances are they'll immediately give up and move on to an easier target. So how do you enable 2FA on all of your accounts? Well, the first step is to get yourself a 2FA app. The second step is to link your app with all your accounts. And thirdly, and very importantly, you need to back up your 2FA app because if you lose access to your codes, you lose access to all of your accounts as well. So let's run through each of these steps individually. There are lots of good 2FA apps available. However, most are only available on mobile. Microsoft and Google each offer one, and there are other open source options such as Aegis for Android and Tofu for iOS. However, the one I use is Authy. Authy is not open source, which techie people will correctly recognize as being a slight limitation. But there are two good reasons why I like it. Firstly, it offers both a mobile and desktop application, which means you don't have to go hunting around for your phone every time you want to log into one of your accounts on your laptop. Secondly, it includes a handy backup feature, so you can recover your Authy codes should you ever delete the app or replace your phone. I won't go through installing Authy in this video. I have separate videos explaining exactly how to install both Authy and Microsoft Authenticator, which I'll link to below. However, once you have installed your chosen 2FA app, you'll have a similar screen to this and you'll be ready to link your first account. So let's go through setting up 2FA on some popular websites and apps. Most well-known companies and popular apps these days offer the option of enabling two-factor authentication. However, as I mentioned earlier, some of these companies don't require you to use an actual 2FA app, as is the case with Apple and Google. You can enable 2FA on your Apple account by browsing to appleid.apple.com, logging in and scrolling down to this section here. Once enabled, rather than using an app, Apple will simply display the code on one of your Apple devices, whether that be your phone or your Mac computer. Google does a similar thing. You can enable 2FA on your Google account by browsing to account.google.com or if you're already logged in, you can simply click on your profile icon and choose manage my account. You'll find the option to enable 2FA under security. Once enabled, Google will use one of your Google apps on another device to confirm that it's you, such as the Google app on your mobile phone. Chat messaging apps such as WhatsApp and Signal also support 2FA. However, they simply allow you to add a PIN code which you'll need to provide each time you register your account on a new device. In WhatsApp, you'll find the option in Settings, Under Accounts and Two-Step Verification. Adding an email address provides an alternative should you ever forget your PIN. In Signal, click on your profile icon in the top left corner of the app, choose account, followed by create a pin. 
Having created the PIN, enable registration lock so that the PIN is required to access your account on a new device. Amazon offers two options for two-factor authentication, either by receiving an SMS each time you log in or by using an app. Where you have this choice, it's always recommended to use an app rather than an SMS. For one, it's a lot easier to steal your SIM card to receive an SMS than it is to access your phone to get to your 2FA app. Secondly, SMSs are sent unencrypted in plain text, which is never a good thing. When linking one of your accounts with a 2FA app like Authy, scanning a QR code is the common approach. In Authy, simply click on Add Account followed by Scan QR Code. This will activate the camera in your phone, which you can use to scan the QR code displayed on the site. Having scanned the code, Authy will look for the logo of the company you are linking to, which in this case it's unable to find, so I'll use a color instead. And then all we need to do is provide a name for the account. Once complete, Authy will now start generating a six digit code specific to my Amazon account. To complete the link between Authy and Amazon, I just need to enter this code and that's it. Two factor authentication is now enabled on my Amazon account. If I sign out and log back in, you can see I'm prompted for the code and I simply need to enter the current code shown in my Authy app. It's a similar process on Facebook. Log into your Facebook account, open the drop down menu in the top right corner of the window and choose settings. Choose security and login, scroll down the page to two factor authentication and click on edit. As with Amazon, you have the choice between using an app or an SMS. Choose app, scan the QR code in Authy and then enter the six digits displayed in the Authy app. In situations where you're enabling 2FA on an account on your phone, such as here on Instagram, scanning a QR code isn't an option. So to set up 2FA on your Instagram account, click on the menu icon in the top right corner of the app, choose settings, followed by security and two-factor authentication. Now, because we're using our phone, instead of scanning a QR code, we're going to choose set up another way and then copy the key. In Authy, this time we'll choose enter key manually and paste the key here on this line. Again, we go through the process of finding the Instagram logo, naming our account, and finally, to finish the process, we simply need to enter the most recent code generated by Authy into Instagram. It's worth mentioning that having set up 2FA, most sites and apps will provide you with a list of codes. These codes act as an alternative to the 2FA code should you ever lose access to your 2FA app. I recommend keeping these codes backed up in a safe place. Now that you have all your accounts protected using two-factor authentication, it's a good idea to back up your 2FA app. To do that in Authy, all we need to do is click on the settings icon in the top right of the app and choose accounts in the bottom menu. We'll then enable authenticator backups, create a password, and that's it. We can be safe in the knowledge that our 2FA codes are now backed up and all of our online accounts are protected from being hacked. So that is how and why you should enable two-factor authentication. As I said, links below to install and use Authy, or if you prefer, I also have a video for Microsoft Authenticator. Visit the website for lots more information on this and all your other favorite apps. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.